Hi friends, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel for a big one. This is a big one. This is gonna be me introducing Jordy, the boyfriend. Feels very much like introducing the boyfriend to your family because someone new in your life that you care about, to people that know you well that you care about, except for instead of like a family of three, it's a family of thousands and so it's just even more of a big deal than that. I'm excited to get into it. We asked him some pretty deep, good questions that you guys asked on Instagram, but before getting into the video, I just wanted to sit down and have a little chat with you guys, if possible, and I ask that, out of respect for me, you don't skip this and you watch this, because this is kind of a big deal for me. I don't often, I, let's be honest, I'm pretty historically bad at implementing boundaries and kind of advocating for myself and standing up for myself and how I feel, and this is me attempting to do that. I know a lot of people are very protective and cautious over me, which I super appreciate because you guys witnessed firsthand me get myself into an unhealthy situation and then experience a lot of heartbreak and hurt, and I totally get that, but my hope for introducing Jordy to you guys is that as I continue to live my life and navigate dating and a relationship and learn all of that post-divorce and share the emotions of that with you, that I could just be free of sharing it with you guys in vlogs and on my channel. What I really don't want to happen is to receive unsolicited advice or to receive potentially criticisms, even if it's constructive criticisms, or for people to be overly cautious on my behalf. I think that that's my job to do and no one online's job to do. I wanna give you guys peace of mind that I have awesome people around me, family, friends, therapists, and I want to be able to honestly hear and assess what those people are telling me and what those people are speaking into my life because they see so much of the more full picture. And I don't want my judgment to be clouded with people's unsolicited advice or opinions when they don't see all of me dating for the first time. The boundary that I ask is that you don't comment those types of things here on this video. I want to share with you. Honestly, the reception that I get to this video and to the Hawaii vlog will very much determine how I continue sharing myself dating moving forward in any capacity, whatever dating means in the future for me, just because I wanna make sure to approach it as healthily as possible from my point of view so that I do a good job and that I just feel clarity about it all. Let's just enjoy this journey together. Jordy's a fantastic guy. A lot of people in my life love him already, and I think you guys are gonna love him too. So I'm really excited to introduce him to you, ask him your very tough questions. You guys went in, but we answered them. Um, he was a true sport. So let's get into it. I love you. Thank you for being here. And I'm excited to continue to learn myself in this capacity and grow and experience emotions and just figure out exactly what I want in life. And this is the next step of that. So I'm hopeful to bring you along for it all. Hi friends, how are ya? There. Are. So you keep all of those subscribers in there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. You wanna introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Jordy Cersei. I am a dude and I date Mikhail now. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know how we got here, but somehow we're in Hawaii. We're filming this in Hawaii because in case you missed it, we're dating long distance. So the way that we've kind of been doing that is his job is playing music. He's visiting me some of the time or mm -hmm. I'm meeting up wherever his coolest shows are. He had a show sure. in Hawaii. So I said, yes, I will meet you there. This is what we did. This is what we're gonna do. I asked on Instagram to ask questions that you guys want to know about Jordy. And of course there's some just like super basic, I figured we can kind of do rapid fire mm -hmm. questions about like, who are you? What do you do for a job? And then the like big sister best friends came through and they, mm -hmm. I think that they're trying to kind of vet that you will take care of me, which I totally get. And I told Jordy something I'm a little bit nervous about is that historically I've dated kind of terrible <laughs> people. <laughs> and Kinda. so I think that people might have the assumption or the association of like, oh, now this guy's dating her. If she, she has, likes him, he's gotta be terrible. Yeah, she has bad taste in men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he might be awful. I pulled some hard <laughs> questions. So yeah, Good. let's find out. Okay. You wanna start with rapid fire? Yeah. Okay, basic rapid fire questions and we'll get into the Okay. Meat. First, how old are you? 28 years old, I'll be 29 in January. What do you do for a job? I make songs. I write songs, I record them, and then I play them for people. Mm, where do you live? This is not really a good question. question. <laughs> I live in a car. I live in a Sprinter van. I uh, have for the last year and a half, mostly in Nashville, sometimes in San Diego this summer, in Fairhope, Alabama, with my family. Mm. And where do you plan to live 
Soon. Um, soon, I am moving out of the van and I am moving into my friend's house in San Diego. Mm, why San Diego? Because I love to surf and there are more waves in San Diego than there are in Nashville. A lot more waves. Mm -hmm. What is your Enneagram? Four. I am a unicorn. But what's your wing? Three. I am a unicorn that likes to impress people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people want to know how tall you are. I am six foot. Yeah, I'm six foot. Yeah, last rapid fire question. Is Jordy your real name? <laughs> Jordy is my parent bestowed nickname. So my parents were like, let's call this guy Jordy, but my the, my birth certificate driver's license name is George Truett Cersei the mm third. -hmm. Because my dad is a George, and as you know how this goes, my grandfather, George, as well. And so when mm -hmm. they had me, they're like, we don't need to keep, let's call him something else. So they nicknamed me Jordy. So I've only known a life as Jordy. Yeah. But my driver's license has only known a life as George. Does this mean you plan on having George the fourth if you have a son? Yes. Okay. Or a daughter, Georgina. Call him George for short. Georgia. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We got quite a few deep questions. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Like, why are you drinking coconut water if it's going to kill Mikel? The answer is, we never kiss. <laughs> no, yeah. I am allergic to coconut. That's something that I don't know if a lot of people know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so not I. severe. Actually, a lot of people wanted to know if you eat gluten-free. But mm. no, but you're also very, very yeah. mindful and you're I, I try answers. not. I don't buy bread, usually. If I had to eat gluten-free, I think I, it would be just fine. Yeah. Like, I would, I would kind of like it, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, there's a mm -hmm. couple that we're just recurring over and over and over and over and over again. One of them mm -hmm. is, do we align on religious beliefs? Are you a Christian? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? However you want to... I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, so here's, here's where it gets tricky, because I think about faith in maybe a little bit weird, different way than some Christians that I know. So I would say that there's no way we could possibly have the same beliefs, because beliefs are always evolving and changing and becoming different over time. And I think my beliefs are definitely like that. Like my perception of Jesus is so different than it was two years ago. I feel like there's some, been some points in my life where I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm a Christian. And other Christians might be like, that guy's not a Christian. Being spiritually connected is, is really important to me. And I, probably some of the, the essential questions you may have is like, do you want to like be involved in church? Yeah, I totally do. Mm -hmm. Would, do you talk to other Christians about faith on a daily basis? Yeah, I do. Do you read the Bible? Yeah, I do. Do you pray? Yeah, I do. But I do think that beliefs are always evolving and changing and ours are no different. No different. Yeah. One thing that we talked about actually yesterday is you told me I wasn't putting words in your mouth, mm. so I'm going to go ahead and share it, yeah. is something that I feel like we allied on a lot is more loving people first, more than like the legalism aspect of Christianity or religion. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Jordy's music at all um, when we first connected. And my mom, of course, being a mom, being overprotective, mm -hmm. did a deep dive on you. Oh, I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah, she did. And she sent me your song explaining Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, thanks mom. Yeah. And when I watched it, just like your intention behind it, I was like, this guy, I like the way he thinks. Cause oh, it's, very sweet. I feel like embodiment of the love of Jesus without like all the judgment and toxic things that can sometimes happen in religion. And somehow we just spent five minutes answering the first question. That's Oopsies, I'm so sorry. Okay, did you watch Mikkel's videos before we met? Yes, I did, mm -hmm. um, but not, very just like right before we met we didn't meet when we met mm -hmm. we, we connected we connected mm -hmm. and then I was like I wonder how I'm gonna get to know who this girl is before we go out fortunately that's actually very easy if someone documents their entire life like three times a week so and overshares and overshares everything they think it's perfect yeah um, <laughs> when we were hanging out I was like I kind of have sussed out all potential red flags any whatever mm -hmm. yeah and I still watch the blocks I don't I don't I don't get all of them some of them I miss but I try to he does. Or sometimes I will try to like hit at least the highlights, you know. Yeah, that's very If I only the got 10 chat. minutes. Yeah, I get those like, mm -hmm. what's shooting in today? Yeah. yeah, the big things. Um, okay, so a lot of people know that neither of us were looking for a relationship when we met. Go. Um, you can tell me if this is TMI <clears throat> to share and we can cut it out, but mm -hmm. we went through a breakup around the same time. Mm -hmm. So we were both kind of of the mindset of like... I was like, I'm not going to date for a year. I'm going to be single. I live in a van. Nobody's going to want to date me. I need to just play music, move to California, do my thing, not date anybody. And y'all know my thought process is, was very, mm -hmm. very similar. Um, so someone asked, what made you both want to pursue a relationship if timing wasn't what you expected or anticipated? It's like if you don't have enough money for the good car. Or it's like this is an incredible deal and like maybe for a month it'll be a little shaky while I like figure out the car made payment and everything. But like I'm never going to find a car like this again. And then you buy the car. It was kind of like that. Yeah. I do metaphors a lot. So that I means... I do too. Well, but a similar 
metaphor yeah, that yeah. I said is like if you're walking down a street and there's a twenty dollar bill. I love how we both like put each other in terms of like commodity. <laughs> you're though. worth one car. I'm worth twenty dollars. <laughs> But in actuality, I think mm -hmm. that something that's comforting for me is the fact that really neither of us wanted to date. Yeah. So neither of us were like hungry, desperate for something else to fill us up. Yeah. So it feels safer in a way to be like, neither of us really yeah, yeah. were looking for this, but it was just kind of too good to pass up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, here's a very sweet one that was the most asked question. Mm -hmm. And I think people want to just, you know, be sweet to me. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is your favorite thing about Mikkel? Uh, there's too many things. I can't pick a favorite. No, not no. a single thing. What is one yeah, thing? Yeah, so, so I will so, say anything. So I'm not going to answer um, that question. Um, I was thinking today how I, every time I have a, an issue in my life that I like I'm confused about, or like don't, I'm just a crossroads, I am really thankful I get to ask you for advice because I think you're really wise. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this, okay, I found my actual favorite thing. <laughs> Currently, right now, my actual favorite thing about Mikhail is just you're like very, very kind. Mm. And that is the thing that pervades your life the most is your kindness and I think that is the thing where I'm like yeah I, I have to do everything I can to be with this person because you're very kind and, and that's what I want thank you for being very sweet um just flip the coin a little bit people said are you afraid of us and then said haha I mean the quick judgment because we care for her yeah yeah, yeah. no because I'm gonna try to I'm gonna be as kind as I can to Mikkel and like if I do something really terrible and you come after me then it's like oh yeah that's, that's what should happen good accountability yeah yeah how do you plan to gain her trust after what she's been through? Uh, it's not as much gain. Mm -hmm. It's more just show. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want you to have to rush through the process of trusting somebody new so quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more like I just show up, be kind a day at a time, and let you trust that at your own pace. Honestly, it's like none of my business. I just need to treat you well, and that's your own road. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel about long distance dating? Uh, I, historically, I have been like, nah, never going to do that, not worth it. Um, the fact that we both don't actually have real jobs and can travel kind of whenever makes that, like, not as much of an issue. Like, if we actually had jobs, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a funny thing to say, we both have jobs. I, right. Your job is awesome. But we can both work from anywhere and, like, our work hours aren't, like, too difficult mm -hmm. at this point in both of our lives. So it makes seeing each other, like, once a month, like, I feel like if we couldn't see each other once a month, that would be it. That'd be issue. hard. That'd be but hard. But we can totally do that pretty easily. Yeah. And it's, and it's good. I think possibly the best chemistry that we have is just in our conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, like, talking to you on the phone for, like, eight hours is actually very fun and not, like, a drag and doesn't feel like, oh, I didn't, I wish I could be there. And, like, I do feel like, I, I do wish I could be there with you, but it's, like, I feel very connected to you when I'm on the phone. I also said I would never do long distance because, as you guys know, my love language is touch. Um, and that's just very important to me. But the fact that I wasn't super looking to date and we get to do it long distance allows me to feel like I can still gain my own independence, which is really mm -hmm. cool. And then I think that the best parts of a relationship are built on the foundation of verbal connection and it forces us to do that, which mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for in hindsight. So sorry to the concept of long distance dating for being so like poo poo about it previously. Actually, yeah. there's a lot of benefits to it. I think with us, it works out really well. Cause I was also in the stage of my life where it's like, oh, I, there's a couple of things that I want to do for me mm -hmm. and healing that I need to go through on my own. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to do that on my own. We can still both do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cause we are on our own even if we're building a relationship, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. This is a good one. Favorite way that you and Mikkel are similar and favorite way that you and Mikkel are different. There's so many ways that we're similar. Mm -hmm. I think maybe my actual favorite is that we're weird. <laughs> they don't She's, know how weird I am. <laughs> she is weirder than you think she is. She makes all these weird noises all the time, and they're really good. You probably have only heard like four of her laughs. She's got like 25 laughs, and they're all great, and they're all a little funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was like, yeah. That was good. I like that one. And what about favorite ways are different? You're clean. I'm not like super clean like at all. Like, I live in a car. We have said just real life <laughs> stuff. We try to foresee what challenges would be. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably going to be I'm very challenge. neat and a clean up. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, I was in, I was in a waterfall today. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, do I need to like shower before dinner? And you were like, yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's dinner. And I'm like, yeah, it's dinner. Waterfall. It's like water. I was clean. <laughs> My second favorite way that we are similar mm, there you go. is uh, efficiency. Mm -hmm. We both love things to be efficient. That's, it's so fun. That's I think comes with my three and your wing three too is because the more efficient you are the more you achieve. Saving five minutes of time is just 
the best, the happiest I can be in a day. <laughs> um, what do your families think of this? Me, oh, they love you, her. my parents. I will say, um, I don't. I don't even think that I fully explained this to you. When I first started dating Jordy, um, mom and dad got to meet him pretty soon, but also mm -hmm. just like, you know, they deep dove on you. Yeah. I was kind of playing devil's advocate in mm -hmm. a lot of ways because I was like, ah, right. oh, it's too soon to date. Like, this is stupid. This doesn't make sense. And my parents for the first time were like, go date this guy. I'm not used to having my parents like who I'm dating or like mm -hmm. encourage me to like go for it or like they encouraged me to come here this week because mm -hmm. we kind of planned this early on and I was like that seems stupid to go to Hawaii with someone I'm newly dating. All the things. When we were at uh, lunch with my family, um, Mikkel did a very sweet thing and like we were getting lunch with my parents and my five-year-old niece like didn't didn't really like the food because we were at like a pokey place and she was like I don't like raw fish as much so Mikkel like without just very quietly and discreetly without wanting people to notice like went and ordered like some chicken for my niece to eat and my dad was like very independently was like oh she's just like a very kind person I approve Aww, and it was, it was George. Very sweet. and then my mom so many times been like I've just always wanted somebody to treat you kind. Oh. Yeah. Um, something that reminded me about that story is a lot of people were like, how do you feel about dating someone with a daughter? A lot of people think mm. Imogen's your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's his niece. She is. That's my niece. That's not my daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, first attracted you to each other? Well, you're just attracted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then beyond that when you got to like know a little bit about me. Well, like you, the, the person you, you're attracted, like the way you talk, the way that you think about things, like the, the the products in your home. Very intentional, like not a lot of clutter, not like wasteful, and all of that's very attractive. I think, yeah, just everything about you is super attractive. Thank you. Yeah. The thing that attracted me to him was um, the night we connected. I feel like eventually we're gonna have to tell this whole story, yeah. but the way that he talked in between songs is like, <laughs> was hilarious, honestly. I was just like, this guy's really funny. I wanna know more about this guy because he's, he's unapologetically himself, kind of quirky, and I'm really into that. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing, honestly, if I'm answering this question honestly, that attracted me to him. Do you have any reservations about dating someone that was so recently divorced? Or just dating a divorced person in general? Um, in general, no, I have no reservations. I think it's like a thing to make sure there are no like red flags, but especially in this situation, like, no. It's actually on, only like a perk in my mind. Her being divorced in my mind is only a perk because it was just like a really tough life experience that she went through and, and you feel like you gained so much wisdom and are like, a more refined, stronger, more generous, and wiser person because of it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if I could choose, like, never been married Mikkel or divorced Mikkel, I would totally choose divorced Mikkel because there's just a lot of great wisdom. I like myself better now having gone through something difficult and then, like, having to learn the consequences of not standing up for myself. And we were talking about the concept of kindness and whatever, and I told them, I was like, I still value kindness more than anything, but now I feel a shift in myself to where I'll put honesty before kindness, mm -hmm. and I'll try to be honest in a kind way. Well, but I, I, that's only just being kind to yourself. That is very true. Yeah, you still value kindness, but just more cohesively, I think. And more authentically, I think. Whereas previously, mm -hmm. I would be dishonest with someone just for the sake of being kind with them. Right. You know, if we take a very surface level example and someone was like, does this shirt look good on me? No matter mm -hmm. what, I'd say, yeah! <laughs> but now, I would funny. maybe say, you know, maybe if we like cuff the sleeves or something, yeah, yeah. you know, still be kind, but be honest. Does this and shirt look good on me? This shirt looks great on you. Oh, thanks. I helped you pick it out. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and she bought it for me because she's kind. <laughs> He was like, no, I don't need it. And I was like, and she bought it for me. Yes, thank you, you do. Thank you for my shirt. Okay. What are your thoughts about Danny McKell and her doing YouTube and her sharing so much of her life online? Really, truly kind of oversharing. I think, I don't know. I don't necessarily know that you overshare. I don't know that I could actually I talked call about that. my ingrown hair that turned into a sickness and then an infection. I think people are just too scared to share. I think oversharing is whenever it would put you or somebody else like in any kind of danger or harm. That's my, Like that's kind of my gauge on what oversharing would be. Mm. Or if it's something that people like didn't want and you're like, oh, I didn't need to know that. Mm. But you, you oversharing, you put it in a place where all these people obviously want to know everything about your life. Because I think you do it for the benefit of other people and a lot of people learn and like grow from you. Mm. And, but I also, like it's also my job. Like I write songs, you know, my records about my relationships, my concept of God, like 
stories about friends of mine, you know, like I'm very used to that idea of like sharing intimate, of sharing parts, intimate of parts of yourself. And then also just like being online in general and like I'm very used to it. Sidebar question that I want to add to this that I feel like people in real life ask me a lot is how do you feel about so much of my life with my ex-husband still being up online for people to view, for you to view? Mm -hmm. All of that. I don't know why it doesn't bother me at all, but it doesn't bother me like one bit. Like I even watched your old wedding video the other day. Mm. And I was like, my takeaway was like, man, I'm so glad he messed that up because now I get a shot. This is sick. <laughs> and then my other takeaway was like, oh, wow, you were really mistreated. I need to like treat you well. Those are my two takeaways from your old wedding video. But I don't know. It like, it doesn't, doesn't mess with me at all. Okay. We have four left. <laughs> okay. I thought this was just cute and sweet. It says favorite she's great moment. Hmm. I think the one of my favorite one recently is just a recurring of like any time you give me really great advice because you I like genuinely do want to run by like pretty much everything my life by you to get your opinion on it because mm -hmm. I think you're really really sharp and catch a lot of things generally but mm -hmm. also like just really wise and also oriented towards treating people well and all of that comes out in the advice that you give mm -hmm. and so it's like every every that's my favorite like oh yeah she is for the best I have a lot about you this no one asked me this question but I'm gonna share a couple. Um, just now, before filming this video, he was like, w we have to return the rental car tomorrow, and I got it, Sandy. Your side was not Sandy at all. No, it was Sandy. Eh, I got it very Sandy. And he was like, how about you just, like, get ready for dinner, take your time, whatever, and I'm going to go hunt down a way to clean up the truck and, like, did it without being like, look at me doing something nice, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like, that's just your personality. And I was in the shower getting ready for dinner, and I was like, I was just so effortlessly... Oh. A, a way to show, I don't know. And care. efficient. And efficient. We did two things at the same Yet time. Yet again, oh. efficient. Oh. Also, the way that you just are not afraid to check in about like, hey, how did that make you feel? Hey, how can I make your day better? Hey, like ask kind of like, kind of, most people would be uncomfortable asking that. Like, mm -hmm. hey, when I did this, did it make you feel anything? Or like, was that okay? Or just checking in, mm -hmm. things like that. You're not afraid to ask it ever. And it makes life so much easier and communication so much easier and shows how intentional you are. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. This was recurring too. I think people are, you know, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Musicians have stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Do they? <laughs> Do they? <laughs> yeah. And um, people want to know mm -hmm. your thoughts on touring and yeah. maintaining a health, maintaining and pursuing a healthy relationship. I think it's like the same as anybody that like travels for work. Yeah, true. So it's like if you travel for work, how do you maintain a healthy relationship while touring? And I think maybe with touring the other thing that's adding added in is like with a lot of attention on you at some at some points like an yes. unhealthy more like a very a large disparity between normal life mm -hmm. and like large amounts of people giving you attention nightly mm -hmm. on tour there's like a million ways that you keep a relationship healthy in any circumstance mm -hmm. and i think with touring it's like oh yeah like a check-in like once a day if possible mm -hmm. like a date while i'm on the road in general with relationships mm -hmm. touring no different goals don't matter. The steps you do every day are what define your relationship. Mm. So you can you can set a goal of like, all right, I want to have a great relationship and be connected even while along the road and never be unfaithful. It's like that goal doesn't matter. It's like what do you do every day to make sure that this is healthy or to make that goal matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I've been shocked with like when you're on tour, how you're able to find an hour or whatever in a quiet room when you're literally sharing a bed. <laughs> with 12 dudes. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, 12 okay, guys to a bed. That's that, what tours like. Just kidding. That might be a little over exaggeration, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's, Some what tours. It, that's what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. Um, and like, call me and I'm like, you mm. literally have been working for 15 hours and you still, you know, show mm. that you're taking time and putting forth effort and it's very cool. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. that. Okay, here's a question for me. Yeah. Yeah. How is it listening to music he's written about other girls? I feel like uh, it's very similar to me having videos about my past relationship up online. So logically, I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. But we were talking the other day mm -hmm. about, I was like, I kind of feel like maybe I need to be a more supportive girlfriend, like listen to your music more. But at the same time, it's going to be a lot easier for me to listen to your music in the future when it's not like right. love songs about other girls, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but a lot of his music, I feel like it's a mix between real and fictional, some of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. so like that helps me as well. Um, yeah, but I yeah. just made up. 
And it's just, they're great songs. So, Thanks. yeah. And I think I'll love your songs even more going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That's basically my answer to yeah, that yeah. question. And also, I think, like, I don't have a requirement that you listen to my music. Right, yeah. You know? Probably, like, you wouldn't necessarily need me to think your vlog is great. Right. For us to be, but, like, I just so happen to, like, think it's really cool because I kind of do a similar thing. Mm -hmm. And I, like, really respect that type of connection with an audience. I do. I am very glad that I genuinely and organically mentioned your music to the vlog before we met because mm -hmm. it's proof of like no look i did think it yeah, was yeah, good yeah, yeah, you yeah. know that's true. like here it is and I that said. was the record that wasn't about anyone that's i yep mm -hmm. <laughs> um, last question maybe we can both answer this mm -hmm. what are some goals you hope to accomplish as a couple it's kind of open-ended mm -hmm. it's kind of vague uh, it's just kind of a simple answer to like to be really kind to you mm -hmm. And have fun together is my goal. Mm -hmm. That's mine too. Yeah. Any other parting words? I'm glad to be here mm -hmm. and uh, it is nice to meet you. If I was just dating Mikkel for people to listen to my music, uh, that would be a very good business move, but I promise I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I've, I've already <laughs> had some people say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's not I, why I'm here. Yeah. So if that, so don't listen to my music if that's, that's just like boycott me. Don't Google Until his name. I stick around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for uh, allowing me to welcome a new dynamic on the channel. Yeah, it's just good to introduce someone that I care about to a lot of other people that I care about. We have dinner reservations. We're going to go eat a lot of fish. I hope you have the best rest of your day, and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye. So give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Talking to you, here we go again. Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here?